Good evening folks, this is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about the facial now palsy in children. And it's a common thing and it could be uh, either congenital or acquired. This disease was first described by Charles Bell in the year 1830. That's why we call this Bell's palsy. It has many causes. It could be a infectious cause. It could be uh, a idiopathic or acquired congenital causes or diseases like sarcoidosis can cause this. So let us uh, see this problem in more detail this evening. Now, there are a few things I need to share with you regarding uh, the, uh, the incidence and the spread of uh, Bell's palsy. There are no racial, no uh, uh, no ethnic differences in this disease. But two things I want to share are pregnancy and diabetes. In pregnancy, third trimester, there is a threefold risk for Bell's palsy. And also in uh, diabetics, in diabetics there is a fourfold risk. So those are the two important points to remember. So there is a threefold greater risk in pregnancy, especially in third trimester, and there is a fourfold risk, greater risk in patients with uh, diabetes for facial palsy. So Bell's palsy, there is a fourfold risk for diabetics. Please remember that point because diabetics may present with this problem um, many times in primary care. And the other thing is when there is the gradual facial palsy, you need to think about uh, um, uh, things like cholestyotoma. Now there is a syndrome when the facial paralysis happens with the facial swelling and a fissured tongue. So there is a fissured tongue in adolescent and is having recurrent episodes of facial palsy that is called Melkerson Rosenthal syndrome. Melkerson Rosenthal syndrome it is a facial paralysis with episodic facial swelling and a fissured tongue. And it, it typically begins in adolescence but with the recurrent episodes of a facial palsy. And there are uh, other things in this uh, things that these patients can have tuberculosis granulomas in the uh, edematous tissue. So Malcrosson Rosenthal syndrome is known for those things. Now sarcoidosis is another cause, especially in patients with the bilateral facial palsy. So think about sarcoidosis in a, a bilateral facial palsy. Now let's come to the children. I'm, I'm, I, I'm describing about the adults because that gives you how children differ in the causes of uh, getting a Bell's palsy. Now in children, the most common cause for facial palsy is acute otitis media. So that's a very important point, folks. The most common cause of Bell's palsy in children is acute otitis media because many times we forget that the children has ear infection. So the bacterial infection of the middle ear um, is very easy to find. All you got to do is to take an otoscope and uh, look at the tympanic membranes and you will see a red tympanic membrane. You see the uh, uh, facial nerve goes to the petrous portion of the temporal bone. That's why it is so near to the middle ear. That's why anything that affects the middle ear could also uh, spread to the facial nerve and cause facial palsy. So the most common cause of uh, facial palsy in children is acute otitis media. Then comes Lyme disease. Very important, folks. Lyme disease could be a cause for facial palsy. Today I was uh, seeing a patient, just eight year old boy, and he has a, a facial palsy. I ordered a Lyme titer for him. I was surprised. The Lyme test came positive. The Lyme test came positive in this eight year old boy. And I was really surprised because I never saw a case of facial palsy in Lyme disease. So the point here is uh, Lyme disease is a common cause for facial palsy in children. 
so when you see a boy or a girl with a facial palsy always think about Lyme disease especially in areas where uh, ticks are uh, very endemic where Lyme disease is endemic like states like Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut the northeastern United States this is very very common so Lyme disease is a cause for facial palsy acute otitis media is a cause for facial palsy and uh, there are other things there is this Mebius syndrome Mebius syndrome is uh, accompanied by impairment of uh, ocular abduction so Mebius syndrome is congenital facial palsy with abducens now dysfunction abducens now as you know is the sixth cranial now so the facial palsy with abducens now dysfunction we call it maybe a syndrome. So congenital facial palsy with abducens now dysfunction is known as Mebius syndrome. And the Mebius syndrome, sometimes called a Mebius sequence. So remember, it's a congenital problem. I mean, a patient can have a unilateral or bilateral abducens now uh, dysfunction in this problem. The other thing is herpes simplex virus infection. For years, herpes simplex mediated viral inflammatory immune mechanism for Bell's palsy was a subject of controversy. But now, I mean, we have polymerase chain reaction and we are have DNA testing. And it is showing the spread of uh, herpes simplex virus in patients with uh, facial palsy. So herpes simplex virus, HSV activation, has become accepted as a likely cause of Bell's palsy in many adults cases. Now we have seen HSV-1 genomes in even in children having this problem. So herpes simplex virus is another cause for this problem. So you see Lyme disease, Lyme disease has become the most common cause of acute facial nerve palsy among children in areas endemic for this infection. So remember Lyme disease, that's most very important. The other important thing is uh, the most cr uh, common cranial neuropathy associated with Lyme disease, Lyme meningitis is facial nerve palsy. That's an important point. The most common cranial neuropathy associated with the facial meningitis, uh, the Lyme meningitis is a facial nerve palsy. So always remember that point, folks. Now, the involvement of the facial now can be unilateral or bilateral. And uh, the mechanism by which Lyme disease causes facial now palsy may be related to the direct invasion of the now by Borrelia burgdorferi. You see, Borrelia burgdorferi can invade the nervous tissue and cause the facial palsy. So sometimes you see the tick bite or erythema migraines in the neck or cheek areas. But for the patient I saw, they, his parents do not know anything about tick bites or erythema migraines. He is otherwise normal. And uh, his actually his facial pulse is getting better. So you see, um, even in the absence of uh, a tick bite history or erythema migraines, you still need to suspect Lyme disease as one of the causes for the seventh nerve palsy. Now, let us see other causes. There is this, uh, uh, I mean, in Lyme disease, let me tell you one more important point. Unlike in adults, in children with Lyme disease, if you observe the CSF, you will see the WBC going up and the protein going up or both going up. So in adults, CSF findings may be non-specific, but in children with Lyme disease, their CSF might show an elevated WBC count and elevated protein count. And if you do polymerase chain reaction DNA testing, you might even see antibodies that are specific to Borrelia burgdorferi. So the CNS findings are different in children with Lyme meningitis compared to adults.
The other cause is Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Basically, it is herpes zoster. Ramsey Hunt syndrome is caused by the activation of a varicella zoster virus. So the Ramsey Hunt syndrome is caused by reactivation of varicella zoster virus. And as you know, the virus lies dormant in sensory ganglion after primary infection. And when immunosuppression happens, this virus gets reactivated from sensory ganglia and it attacks the areas with a vesicular eruption and especially in the external artery canal and causing vestibular uh, uh, cochlear dysfunction. So Ramsey Hunt syndrome is characterized by facial paralysis associated with a painful vesicular eruption with an external auditory canal and vestibular cochlear dysfunction. So it's a Ramsey Hunt syndrome is also in facial palsy. The other cause is HIV. Many HIV patients they develop CNS lymphocytosis and also facial palsy. Whenever their cellular immunity comes down they become uh, susceptible to lymphomatosis in the CNS and uh, that might may show up as Bell's palsy. There are other things like cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, adenovirus, rubella virus, mumps, influenza B, Coxsackie virus, all those viruses, viruses can also cause facial palsy. But the most important things are Lyme disease, acute otitis media, and uh, uh, Ramsey Hunt syndrome, Mebia syndrome, those are the most common causes. Now, if the facial palsy is gradual, what would you think of? If the facial palsy is gradual, you need to think about uh, cholestitoma. Cholestitoma is a common cause of a gradual facial palsy. So you see, I described about acute causes of facial palsy, like acute arthritis media, Lyme disease, epizoster, HSV, HIV, Ramsey Hunt syndrome, Mebius syndrome. Then I also described about chronic causes like sarcoidosis and cholestatoma. And those causes are important because if we know the causes, we look for those causes when we see a patient with Lyme disease, especially a boy or a girl with Lyme disease. Hopefully that helps you. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening.